In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We welcome you, if you are visiting with us, to St. Michael Parish this evening, and we also welcome in a very special way Father Bill from the Benedictine Sisters of St. Agnes for our mission appeal. We're glad you're here with us. We take a moment to set aside distractions and to turn to God, asking for His love, for His mercy, and for His forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came into the world in obedience to the Father's will. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you suffered and died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God beside you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is a source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much leniency, you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good grounds for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. And while everyone is asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. Now when the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. Now the slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in the field? Where have the weeds come from? And he answered, an enemy has done this. Now his slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First, Collect the weeds, tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise and may the grace and peace of our risen Lord be with all of you. I'm very, very happy to be here this evening here at St. Michael's over this weekend, actually, as we reflect together on mission, the mission of Jesus Christ to our global world. As the diocesan mission office assigned for your annual mission appeal, as Father John said, a community of Benedictine sisters from Tanzania. I myself worked for nearly 20 years in Eastern Africa, and I came to know this community of religious women, and I'm very happy that I could, can represent them here as an example as we again reflect together on the mission of Jesus Christ. 
And I use that term, the mission of Jesus Christ, because that's really what we come each week when we gather, as you are here this evening, to more deeply appreciate just who Jesus Christ was and is and what he came to accomplish, his mission. You know, as we read along this year from the Gospel of Matthew, we are walking through the sequence of Jesus trying to formulate those special group of people who truly came after a lot of work to appreciate exactly who he was. You know, even this hand-picked group found it difficult right up to the end when Jesus wanted to demonstrate, again, his mission, just, you know, the awesomeness of God is beyond our imagining, isn't it? But what the unconditional love of God looks like when it's incarnated in the person of Jesus Christ and then demonstrated as he did at the end by giving his life out of love. And it's very special. This is a very special experience of the divine in our whole human family. You know, all my years in Africa, I never met a single person, African person, who did not believe in God. They all believe in God. But it's a God out there. In fact, one of my friends who worked with an indigenous group, very remote uh, ethnic group, he told me that the word for God, the name for God, is the same word as the sun. You know that powerful entity out there? In fact, it's not unlike the second largest religious group on planet Earth, Islam. The Muslims have a tremendous respect for God. In fact, you may know they have a hundred different names for God. But again, it's that God out there that they hold, they hold in great awe and reverence as they bow repeatedly through the day in their prayers. What is unique about Christianity is our God has become intimately bound up in our humanity. That's the mission. And by the grace of God, you and I are beneficiaries of that unique experience of the divine. Jesus, who took our humanity to God's self and made it possible for us to be use language as we read along, for example, each Sunday now, for 15 Sundays in a row, Paul's letter to the Romans, he tries to lift that up, you know, that we are actually like the very body. The church is the very body of Jesus Christ. And that's the good news that we come to believe in and share and celebrate. In fact, the, once the disciples fully grasp this unique intervention of the divine in human history, that experience of Jesus Christ. And they took that amazing event and it spread. Think about it, like this very weekend, in every single country on planet Earth, they're Catholic Christians like us. Every country. In fact, I might add, there's really no institution in the world like our Catholic Church. Imagine, 2,000 unbroken continuity of one institution. What we are reflecting on in these readings each week, that is what happened that this body of Christ was formulated and it exists to this day, 1.3 billion of us. 
And what is even more amazing than that continuity that exists right up until our own time, but it's that powerful, powerful sense of unity. In my mission work, I enjoyed a leadership position that allowed me to visit our missioners in Latin America and uh, almost every country in Latin America, many Asian countries, and of course, Sub-Saharan Africa where I lived. But every Sunday, same scriptures are being proclaimed and the celebration of the Incarnate One every place in the world. Now that is why Christianity is so vibrant, particularly in what we call the global south where the church is growing and really especially in sub-Saharan Africa. Where I lived and worked, we baptized many adults every year, Easter time. And the response, likewise with vocations. That's why we can use these Benedictine sisters of St. Agnes as an example. This is a small community. Again, this is an illustration of the response to what is revealed in the, the, by the mission of Jesus. They're a young community, but already they have over 500 nuns. They're in healthcare, education, pastoral work, ministries to people with special needs, orphanages. And you know, culturally, it's no small matter for a young woman in Tanzania, where they're based, to commit her life to be a religious woman. Because culturally, for a young woman to forego marriage and childbirth is a real difficult challenge. In fact, I think some of you, would, you feel that way too. You just can't wait to get a grandkid, right? And right now, there's a couple dozen young women preparing to move into the novitiate. I mentioned the kind of ministries like health care. Some years ago, one of these young women came to Minnesota, where I live, and that's why you're hearing a, this strange accent from me. She came to get her undergraduate degree at a Benedictine college in Minnesota. When she finished, she went back to Tanzania and then got a scholarship to study medicine in Italy. So a few years ago, I got a WhatsApp call from Sister Mediatrix to tell me she completed her medical studies. Now you imagine this young woman was literally born and raised in a mud hut in a village. She got her MD degree in her fourth language. But here's the thing, with all these women doing health care, they aren't just practicing medicine nine to five. You know, as you continue to read along with Father John each Sunday about Jesus' actions, so often he's healing, isn't he? That healing ministry is a symbol, really, of our mortality. When we're sick, it's a kind of a reminder that we're terminal beings, right? And so, when Sister is doing her healing, it's a sign that Jesus Christ has power even over death itself, the ultimate power of healing, to giving a fullness of life. The orphanage is another beautiful example. A couple of years ago when I visited, that very week when I was there, a young woman died in childbirth and left a pair of little twins. 
I could hold one in each hand like this. I was back in January to visit the sisters and now these two little tykes are bouncing around. And in that orphanage, when you watch these sisters, it is such a profound expression of love and care. They will take care of these little ones up, uh, up until the age of majority. They will go through the sisters' elementary and secondary schools. So th that's the kind of demonstration of these women as an example of the ongoing of mission of Jesus Christ to demonstrate what I started my sermon with, that unconditional love of God, that no one, no one is outside the realm of God's love. His total unconditional acceptance and these sisters demonstrated. So that's it. Now we will have a second collection for the sisters. And I didn't I ask Father John, I didn't think of it, but if you were not prepared for the mission collection this evening, I think it'd be appropriate if you just bring back an envelope and put it on next Sunday for the Benedictine sisters. I know you'll be generous, but more importantly, than the collection this evening. Let me end by saying the most important thing that I would wish to share is that you and I realize what a tremendous grace and gift it is that we, again, by the grace of God, are included in this unique experience of God among us in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is here with us. We are united in him this very day. And now let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the Lord's care and compassion, let us bring before him our prayers and our petitions for ourselves and for our world. For all the people of God, may God's grace strengthen our commitment in giving witness to the gospel in our daily lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all elected officials, may the Holy Spirit grant them wisdom and prudence in their service to those they govern. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families broken by divorce or separation, 
May the Lord bring them forgiveness and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For all members of this faith community of St. Michael, may the presence of Christ in the Eucharist continue to nourish us in faith, hope, and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Pete DuPond, for whom this Mass is celebrated, may God's perpetual light shine upon them in His eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Benedictine Sisters of St. Agnes, that God will continue to bless their ministry, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all those who are or will be celebrating birthdays or anniversaries this week, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for our parishioners, family, and friends who are traveling over these summer months, that they may be kept safe, let us pray to the Lord. And for all those who have asked for our prayers, those we have promised to pray for this evening, and those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord and now we pause to add our own intentions in silence. And for all these prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, hear these prayers we have brought before you, and answer them according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. water and wine, the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Cleanse me of all my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered in the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, 
we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
And now let us pray together in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace with you. <laughs> peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, bring us all to everlasting life. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. And as Father Bill said, our second collection this evening is for the Benedictine Sisters of St. Agnes.
The body of Christ. 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 Amen. 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 The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Thank you for coming. The body of Christ. 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 Thanks, Father.
address them in Swahili if you like. Mm, I will do that. And then, Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The August ministry schedules are out there on the display case, as well as all the stuff for the ice cream social and Eucharistic ministers, altar servers, if you're uh, can help us in that ministry, please do so. We saw something on Facebook, and I actually talked to them this week. Bishop Brennan is going to be here on August the 5th. I'm going to hang this on the bulletin board. He is giving a retreat day. They're going to have adoration, confessions, and it's from 9 to 2.45 on August the 5th. So if you're interested in that, I'll put that on the bulletin board for you. We're going to have a special treat tonight because Father Bill is going to bless us in Swahili. Before I do, just a word of thanks, first of all, to the diocese for giving the Benedictine Sisters of St. Agnes the opportunity to have their version of mission shared here at St. Michael's. And personally, my word, a word of gratitude for your wonderful pastor for welcoming me so well and making me feel at home here at St. Michael's. I do have a few brochures about the sisters I'll have at hand. They have a wonderful website explaining more about their work. Feel free to take one along after Mass. I'll ask God to bless you all now with health, health of mind and body, today and always. Ego kumunyezi, tunoma sasa. Wabariki wa mimi wako, ili wapatie sasa akia, mwilini, Na rohoni leo na siku zote. Wapariki kwa dina na baba, na ramwana, na roho mtakatifu. Amen, same all over. Amen. Now, those of you with canes, you can throw them away after that special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have a great evening.